Thanks, the bull. Hey, if the sound is off, let me know. Um, welcome to the stream, everybody. The bull, I see you have a question for me. I've got tons of moments now. Oh, you know what? I'm not piping the music through. Let me do that. I'm think I'm hearing it, but I'm like, wait, it's not in my ears though. What's going on? There we go. Now we'll turn that down. So it's background music, not foreground music. All right, so if uh, you caught the stream earlier today, the not the game dev show, slightly, oh yeah, that's right. Earlier today, I moved this down and now it's back up. Um, that explains that. The sound when we were trying to do the Zoom chat with Jason Story, who taught me a few things. And in the afternoon, I did a few changes. Um, and the biggest change is visual. Um, for those of you who saw, we saw colors. So now I made the colors only attached to the objects. So pause that. Um, the object that it comes from will have its own color, its own log color and size. Um, and then if it doesn't have one, this no owner will come up. And that's because some of the scripts, like this data script, it's not mono behavior. Uh, so it doesn't, it can't have that class and it can't have the object for the um, script to refer back to, for the log to refer back to. Uh, so Jason was kind enough to help me with a little tip on this services code that basically allows me to create a static log here um, that from data I can tap into via services and then just do log dot log um, technically I could do that for all of them but I won't get the colorful effect so uh, the colorful effect is really cool I haven't updated all the classes yet but they will look like this um, this is not one of them. That's just happened to be the way that is. But that way, not only is the colors helpful, for me at least, um, but also knowing what the object is, you can kind of follow along with the um, with things. And this this is kind of where we are now. And that's a whole nother topic. Do I know of a way to make shortcut to insert a line of code in visual? What's VB? Shift D, it will insert a line of code like debug.log. I like saying debug, by the way, not debug. Debug. Hmm. What is Shift D? No, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Is VB Visual Basic or Visual? It's not, I, no, it can't be Visual Basic. Oh, Visual Studio, that's what I, okay. No, I don't. I actually haven't used Visual Studio in a very long time, or ever. I'm not, I think that before using Rider, I think the last thing I was using was, I mean, whatever came with Unity, if that was Visual Studio, then Visual Studio. But it's been maybe three years, two and a half or three years since I started using Rider, so I can't, can't remember. So I was going to be doing scene loading. And then I got to this point where I realized that somewhere along the line, I actually, I've got my data and my data is supposed to keep track of all my scenes, but then the process of loading this, the data overwrites all that. So I realized I need to go back to the drawing board on how I start the game essentially. And so that's what I want to do, is to scratch what I have, figure out what to keep, figure out what to throw away, 
Um, because there certainly is plenty I need to throw away. And essentially, I just need to go back to the beginning. Um, and this keeps tripping me up. So I like to double click here. It keeps bringing me here. I've got to remember to go down here now and double click on the second or sometimes the third row. That's my only annoyance about the debug log changes. Uh, but apparently there's nothing to do about it. So I did add a tick on the data class, uh, just in case I wanted to do something on update. Tick happens via game, which is itself a mono behavior. Um, and on update, wherever update is, uh, on update, it will call tick, and tick basically calls tick for player and tick for data. Uh, or tick for each player. So, uh, it's a way to do updates in non mono behavior in the update loop. Uh, yep. So, now, got to figure out what happens when I start the game. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, set up on a lake. Oh, that's right. Setup is what we did earlier today by doing the LOS mono behavior. Scene manager. Scene loaded. We're subscribing to scene loaded. That's if game equals null. So this is basically happening the, the very first time it starts. And so we're going to say, instead of making it green, we're going to say um, game is loading for the first time, time this session. So that's different from um, I guess later instances when the scene loads. Uh, I guess this is the only stuff we need to do, and then this should never happen. That's why I've got this here. We'll make an error. Um, that shouldn't happen. There should always only be one game. And so, start. While it's not ready, we're going to get ready. What does get ready do? So. If we don't have save and load yet, then we're going to return. If we don't have new game data set up, um, then we're going to return, whatever that refers to. I'm not sure, actually. Um, I think this is the hard-coded new game. So if, if, if we need have no game data, then this will just hard-code the first game. Um, uh, I'll put a note for myself. New game data setup is the hard code for a game where we have no data uh, all right and if there's no active scene then we'll return these I can delete now um, okay and set up new game data so if the title we're at title, then we're going to populate the game data. If we're a new game, uh, populate game data. So in both of these, these are, um, uh, I'm going to make this more. This happens, this will happen at runtime in the actual game. Um, ah, Jason, yeah. Against all odds. Hey, Jason. Hey, Jack. Hey, the bull. Hey, Tyler. Hey, everyone. Oh, my background is bring it down. Oh, and Jason, that audio mixer we talked about earlier today, physical audio mixer looked really nice. Doesn't work on Max. Doesn't work on Max, which seems seems short-sighted of them. Um, a lot of people do audio on Max, but what can you do? All right, so this will happen when the game runs uh, in real life. This only happens when I start the game from new game scene. So this is just for me. 
So game starting from the new new game scene character creation and game is starting from the title screen and in both of those cases it's going to populate the the default data however if we aren't in one of those scenes then we will populate the last um data it was not title or new game so we will populate the last saved data and let me make this LOS mono behavior. Institute the missing members, or missing member, there's only one. And move this up there. Move awake. All right. Um, we have nothing here in tick, so I'm going to remove that. And we'll make this a little more compacted. All right. Um, so this is also check, uh, do, just doing a basically check to make sure it's ready. Hey, Paul. Um, all right. So all the debug. go um, nine matches in one file I think the settings I saved earlier uh, worked so now it's only gonna replace them in this one file oh that wasn't what I wanted though data with hard-coded start data. All right. Now, if the player count's not zero, won't we'll populate the already player count with some purpose. Now, this shouldn't happen, so I'm going to make this an error. Um, at some point, it must have happened, but I think it's probably for when I am testing things. I forgot to forget to delete the player that I added to test during not runtime. Uh, so that's why this was on this purpose. You probably forgot to delete a test player in the data structure. Hint, hint, hint. All right, reset starting player, assuming four players. Uh, so I'm gonna remove this one. All that, all that, all that. This is good. This is my notes from last March. I'll keep that there. Okay. Uh, and if we don't do that, then we're going to do load last game. And so I'm going to change this, remove that color and say loading last games data. Let's see. In my save and load, I'm going to do load game uh, player preps get int the last save game. That's essentially how I save the last save game with your player press. Simple enough. Um, set up new game data. Da, 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 da. We did that, we did that, we did that. Okay. In this process, I should probably make sure I write as many comments as I feel appropriate. Alright. Alright, so the next step then is save and load load game. So let's make this a Legend of Stones mono behavior. All right, and then we will do the find debug. I need to take this song out of the playlist because every time I include it, Makes me think I'm on my Be Right Back scene. All right. All right, all right, all right. So this is calling load game. 
it's a very well named uh, <laughs> method. All right, uh, game ID ID. Set the last saved game for this. Uh, and that's the data path. This all works just fine. And this is where we start relinking the stuff. Um, this is where we have to relink uh, player inventory and equipment to the various uh, modules and data classes over here that aren't serializable or may have changed uh, between plays. If I'm doing an alpha or beta or any other bug fixes, that might change. And so we want to make sure that um, nothing weird happens, like I remove an item here, but it's still in the player's inventory or change the name or anything like that, essentially. Um, I don't think any of this is very controversial for the most part. Um, it's certainly not what's causing my problem, I think, uh, but rather the order of operations is what's causing my problem. Um, and I should have used the bathroom before this, but I didn't, so I'm gonna go pee. I'll be right back. Did you miss me? Uh, Paul, I have not been drinking today. There is no seal to be broke. So, there. Always go before you go so you don't have to go after you went. That's a very good way of putting it, Jack. All right. Um, so I think this is this is this is all fine. Um, we updated those. I'm gonna set the colors for these because that's one of the exciting new things we can do now. Um, uh, so save and load is going to be this beautiful green color um, and game is set to that actually I'm going to change that make it a little bit more uh, dark um, new game data setup is going to be a bright green um, what's this confirm data unload oh that's my um, okay is I think okay um, relink base object air relink voices it looks like I'm doing things in different methods in different ways and I might want to fix that um, so I'm gonna say uh, log revisit this may want to combine all three links to this method or class. Um, it looks like I may have created this class, which is great, confirm data on load, which is essentially doing the same thing as um, the these two things, game data, relink player inventory, and relink 
player equipment, um, those are technically also confirming data on load. So I want, might want to move these to that. So I'm going to say log uh, revisit. Might want to move these to confirm data on load.cs. Uh, but I don't want to do that now. That's. Oh, you made your first Manhattan, Chris. How was it? It's easy to make, right? It's. Um, did you use your finger to stir? Or did you use a spoon and a shaker and stir it like a true professional? Good. I'm glad. All right, so we're setting up new game. Load last game data. Uh, save and load, load game data, and that's done. Then cursors, reset our cursors, uh, and I can actually use the static. And there should always be cursor, so I don't need that if anymore. Um, I suppose I could put it here. There's something clicking. One of my things is clicking. I think it's this one. All right, stop clicking for now. That was annoying. Shaker and a bar spoon. Good. Um, that's good. Long Island iced tea. Oh my gosh. Last time I had a Long Island iced tea, I had three or something. It was in Las Vegas. It's a long time ago. At this point, it's probably 14 years ago, 13 years ago. But I went to Las Vegas by myself. Usually I would go with my brother and his friend over uh, between Christmas and New Year's. And I went by myself. One had a wedding, the other had a funeral, but I still wanted to go because the year before was a very good time and what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But Suffice to say, I was by myself, so I was bored. So I got myself a bottle of effing vodka and a bag of Ruffles potato chips and was in my hotel room having a happy hour by myself, um, drinking vodka on ice, which is kind of like martini, but just vodka on ice, and eating Ruffles, which of course is salty, makes you want to drink more, so it's perfect. And I got down after talking to a friend. This girl I was dating, she turned out to be really weird, but... Um, suffice to say, I was talking to her on the phone, and then I went off to the to the to the club bar place that we went the year before, in Mandalay Bay, and I called my brother because they were still doing dinner. I guess it was like 10 o'clock. I need to wait till 10:30, so I called my brother. The last thing I remember is talking really loudly about the people walking by to my brother, and then I said, "I'm going in." I don't remember what happened after that, but I woke up the next morning. A hangover in my room um, with a business card of a girl from Australia and noticed that half the bottle of vodka was empty so I drank half the bottle of vodka before going in to the club now I went and had myself some Panda Express and Gatorade and felt better so that night I went back to the same place this time I wasn't drunk when I got there and I ordered uh, a Long Island iced tea because that's my go-to Vegas drink or it was to save some cash because it's like 15 bucks and this was 15 years ago or 13 years ago or whatever and the bartender said oh you're back <laughs> oh man and I, I, I got enough from the bartender to find out that I ordered Long Island iced teas and they cut me off when I started um, 
dropping them. Like I would pick it up and it would fall. It would just fall on the bar and spill everywhere. So they cut me off. And apparently I was talking to a girl from Australia. Uh, no, New Zealand. Not Australia, New Zealand. And I was just making comments about hobbits the whole time in Lord of the Rings. So I think that was a missed opportunity on my part, but that's okay. Uh, that's my story about Long Island iced teas. So I haven't had one in quite a while. Ah, the good old days. Where was I? I, I can't remember now. Um, all right, so we're trying to get ready. All right, so I think this is where the problem is. Um, we're supposed to load the game data here and then load the game list. No. No, that's not the problem. That's just loading the game list of saved games. Um, so that's not the problem. Um, so load default data or saved data from last saved game. And then this is going to uh, load the list of saved games. Um, we're now saying this to true, saying the game is essentially ready. Um, so I'll keep that green because uh, that's an important beat. Is ready is true. Um, that means that. that what does that mean? means that get ready will no longer run uh, this I enumerator is done and where do we call this get scene ready this is I think where we where we have an issue okay all right so if 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 we look way up here we subscribe to the scene manager scene loaded I have no idea, Jack. Uh, I I may have like flashes of memory of talking to her. Um, that's true. She still gave me her business card, which uh, Vegas is Vegas, you know. Um, but I don't even remember if I called her the next day. Um, who knows? Maybe she gave me her business card at the beginning of the conversation and then I proceeded to make an ass out of myself. Um, who knows? Who knows? But that was my last trip to Vegas by myself in that context. Um, so. Scene loaded. So I subscribed to this because my thought process, and I might need to change this. My thought process was that every time the scene's loaded, I, I would do stuff like set up the scene. And that, that kind of makes sense. Um, and that calls this. Um, I'm gonna just, whoops, I'm gonna move this up there. Can I do that here? No, 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 no. So I'm gonna put this up here. Oh, I already do that. View engine scene management. So, oh, because I have my own scene class. So I have to, so I have to specify that. Okay, that's fine. Um, this is gonna say scene was loaded. And then we have to get scene ready. And we're going to start that co-routine. This is where I'm go going wrong. So this is where I need to concentrate and fix it. Because I spent an hour early earlier trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Uh, all right. So. I'm going to probably remove this log later, but I just want to see how often it fires, really. Um, so, scene was loaded. We'll now try to get ready. Get the scene ready. Um, with the coroutine. So, if it's not ready, we don't do anything. Oh, so this is basically if the game is not set up. So if we're just loading the game from scratch, uh, then we don't want to do this until after that day is loaded. Now, of course, if 
if, if you've been uh, following along with my data structure, when that game is loaded, it also loads, once this does its thing, it also loads the scene data that we've saved previously. Now, I was testing things, so I'm going to return that to zero. So it loads this. So if there was anything already saved, it will be there. And I don't want to overwrite it. That's what we're doing. We're accidentally overwriting that at some point. Uh, so I need to figure out if I need, if I want to change the way I'm doing the scene loading. Uh, so scene's not ready. Uh, so until the game is ready. Um, okay, this should only happen when uh, first loading the game from a save file, basically. While the scene is registered is null, waiting for the scene to be registered. Okay, what is scene is registered? This should not be called anymore. Um, now we've seen that this should not be called anymore. So if you keep seeing that and you're like, why, why is that still there? That's why, because I figured I might have to come back to it. Um, what is this supposed to do? For each scene data scene data and data dot scene data okay so this is going through the ones that we've loaded we're going to return the one we load so i need to change this if there's no active scene return null okay what was I thinking So that's simply there to make sure the active scene has been registered. Um, if this static is registered. It should happen on awake. Um, but uh, I guess what I probably faced was that the um, maybe it wasn't called or it wasn't ready the first time this ran and throw an error. So as long as that isn't there, we won't do the rest of it. <sighs> yeah, I think I need to change this because it's, it's confusing the heck out of me. It's a good idea, Jack. Is ready to, is game ready? Let's do that. Being specific is always a good idea. All right, so I'm going to write myself some notes here as to what I think is going on. This method should um, set up the scene data from, if possible, the saved scene, scene data. If the scene data has not already been saved, then, it, then uh, the default data should be added to data then loaded from that. First, we need to um, make sure scene, static scene is, is populated. So first, make sure the static scene is uh, available to be used. There should always be one. Um, there's only one per level. And when we change levels, it goes away. So the next level 
will have one and that will be used but it will take probably one frame i suppose for that to be registered and that's why we do this um, and we're waiting for it to be uh, registered i'm going to change move the color though i want to change the color there um all right scene is registered now Okay, so now that the scene is registered, now that the scene is registered, we want to uh, ensure the data exists in the saved data class. Also, good point, Paul. Set up player. I think. Active scene is the active scene. The active scene lives right here on this object. I'm going to rename this object to be active scene. I'm not sure why it's a prefab. It probably shouldn't be a prefab. Um, and that is active scene. This has my scene data that is just the default data for for this and we'll keep it purple uh, okay so do we want to do this first or that first and i think we want to do this first and i'm just going to delete this because that's that was my earlier testing so first we're going to set up the data active scene data so we've loaded the game data so if we have been to this scene before then that scene data should be there and we're going to pass in active scene data if available and this on our data class here active scene data is technically supposed to be the active scene data so um Okay, so we're getting active scene data. Um, we're going by the unique ID of the scenes, not the names, so I can change the names without worrying uh, and other pertinent details. An active scene again is going from uh, active scene here. So I'm grabbing the UID of the active scene, um, which is in the scene data of that. Um, I guess I'm probably going to have to set this myself since there's no script for it. So I'm going to just set gibberish dash dash gibberish dash gibberish Oops, and change my screen brightness and make oh. All right. So that's going to be the UID for this. That's, I guess, one way of doing it. Um, okay, so it's going to grab that value. And then we're going to see if we have that uh, value in our own. So I'm just going to pass that right here instead. So if we don't have the data, then we're going to save new scene data. Uh, must be the first time in this scene. Okay. 
this has seen data. Um, we'll return, or this returns the saved data from the current active scene. We'll also populate the data if we don't already have it saved. Okay. We don't have the UI ID already in our uh, scene data, then we need to populate that with the default data. and find the data and I, I can probably do something better here too but that's fine I'll do this for now technically this should never be called so I'm gonna do log error this should not have happened why didn't we find the scene uh, and log.log .log error because this is not a mono behavior. Okay. So let's first look at has seen data. This is very basic. It's going through our scene data and returning scene data. So what I can actually do is combine, I believe, these. Or I can get rid of this entirely. Yes, I think I can get rid of this entirely. So I'm going to zombie code this for now. So first we're going to try looping through. And if we can return the data, great, we'll do that. Otherwise, save new scene data, because that means we didn't find it. So this whole check here doesn't really matter. Uh, and I'll zombify this at the same time. I don't know if I'm ever going to need to check that. Um, so if we find the data, and I, I'm saying data, not scene data, because there was a conflict with another thing here. So that wouldn't really work. Uh, there was an issue with that. So, um, and I'm going to just do that. And so return the data if we have it. If it goes through all the scenes, if we don't have it, we're going to save new scene data. Uh, and in fact, we're going to return that. Um, I'm going to make that return the data that it saves so that this should never be called, and it won't be called. So scene data, it's gonna return scene data. Uh, that was a debug log, we don't need tick anymore. All right. I'm gonna remove these later, delete that. So essentially this is going to add to this list right here, a new one. Then we're going to get the last one added. Um, I thought I could have done scene data dot last, but um, That didn't work, and I'm not sure. It's not giving me an option to add something up here, uh, so that's fine. All right. So first, add a blank scene data, populate it with the active scenes data, and 
Jason, I see what you wrote, but I'm gonna finish this thought and then go back to that. And then we're gonna return uh, scene, scene, data, scene, data, dot count minus one. And that will return in this method, the active scene. Jason Sorry says that for each, you can replace with scene data dot first or default. What is this magic? This for each? Let's see. Scene data dot first or default. Again, using link, and that was the other one, but that's okay. X, funny arrow x.ud equals active scene uid. Oh, I was missing the, the parentheses. That's it. So this is looking for the first. So X, X UID. So this is just the instance of, or one of the data objects there. Um, if UID, it will return it if the U, if this is true, the first one, or it will return default, which is null. So what I could, if this is read only, so I could say return this, no, I'm confused. Hello, Brian. So I could instead do this, uh, return scene data found. If so, scene data found, otherwise save new scene data. Oh. 
So if I'm reading this correctly, return if this is not null, it otherwise return this. Okay. That's a lot less code than what we had before. And I'm guessing that this is how one of the things that earlier you were talking about how I do these uh, for loops that I should probably start doing instead this pattern uh, all right so I'm just gonna bring this down that otherwise return save new scene data and this will add uh, the default scene data from the in-game object um, to the data structure and return it All right, so anytime I call data active scene data, it's gonna go through this. It's gonna find the active scene data or um, create it. And it's only used once right now. Okay, so the scene is registered. We want to ensure that data exists. So this is essentially that. Um, and we're going to be doing the active scene setup with that data. Active scene setup is doing things like setup loop. Um, I'm going to press play now. Line 52 comment should be deleted. Now line 43 now. Oh shoot. What uh What was that on? I don't even know what method we were on, Jack. Data, maybe. Oh, because it's not looping through. Let me write a comment, though. Since this is new code for me, I should write a comment for my own uh, memory in case I forget. Um, this goes through the list and returns the first found with x uh, first x found where x.uid equals active scene uid or returns default which in in this case is null It does loop through though, right? I mean, it just does it not in a loop. It, this itself is a loop. Either way, I need to write more comments because uh, it confuses me when I get go back and I'm like, I didn't write a comment. So I'm gonna press play and see if um, this loads properly. What I wanna see is the data from here populated here. Before I was getting it populated and then somehow it was being removed back to zero which was of course not what we wanted. So let's see what happens. All right, well, it's still zero. Uh, so that's an issue. Oh, look at all these pretty colors. See that, the bright one means new game. That means just the game. Uh, but why are these both game? Interesting.
Oh, because they're both on the object game, but it's save and load from the object game. I get it. Um, yeah, so I'm still having an issue where this is being removed. Um, and the reason why I didn't delete some of those other debug logs huh, is that I wanted to see them. This. I want to see this. And interestingly, I don't see that. So. After scene is registered on game. Scene is not ready. Trying to get ready. Game is ready. And loot get ready. That's a whole nother thing. That's a whole another issue. Um, okay, game is ready. This doesn't seem like it ran at all. Um, because I don't see my debug log here. It's supposed to be called from here. And I never got either of these waiting for scene to be registered or scene is registered. I am not, Jason. But I think that's just by pressing this button. Essentially, that's not being called. So that's that's a problem, I suppose. Um, this is not being called. Scene get ready is not being called. Scene loaded was is being called. Oh, wait a minute. It is right here. Scene is not ready. I'm trying to get ready, but it never comes back.
It only does this once. And never does the rest. Let's see. So it should be purple. Scene is not ready. Trying to get ready. Game is ready. And it never does the rest. Press Control Shift B, set the editor into debug mode, then run Rider via the bug icon. This. Alright. Well, let's just do that because we'll follow through on learning something new and then go back to the rest if this doesn't help us. Control Shift B. I'm not sure how to put this into, I don't think it's this. Did work. Um, hey, thanks for subscribing, Jesse. And welcome to the stream. And hi, Athena's Owl. Not exactly sure what. Um, how to read any of this. Oh. And stop. Oh, I see. Okay. The break kills execution on the co-routine, really? I had in my mind your comment from earlier, and I was moving my way there. So, yield return null, I should do. stuff. Now, I don't know why there's two. Um, probably because I already had one in the saved data, but I didn't have the UID. And this matches the UID, so essentially this would be um, always ignored. Thank you, Jason. Blue arrow, so once it was had the breakpoint, I could there was a blue arrow I could step through each line of code. Okay, I'll have to keep that in mind for the future. Um, okay, 